Hi, my name is Zico and I'm a technical specialist at AlphaTem Technology. In this video, I'll take you through the configuration and use of the YCT747 4-channel thermocouple handheld data logger. The YCT747 is a portable and flexible temperature data logger. It can accept inputs from up to four miniature thermocouples of all types, giving you a potential temperature range of minus 100 to 1700 degrees Celsius using the appropriate probe. It can sample between intervals of once every second to nearly once every hour and has a large multifunctional four digit display. So what comes supplied with it? Well, you get a rugged case to protect your data logger, as you can see over here. You also get two exposed junction K-type thermocouples. You get batteries, software, so you can download the data, a USB connection to connect to your PC and instructions. So let's get started. So let's switch the unit on. The first thing we'll do is set the date and time. We can do this by clicking on the yellow shift button. As you can see, shift appears at the top and then click on the button where it says clock above it. And now we can set the date and time. So the first thing we're gonna do is set the time to say nine o'clock. And then click on shift to give us the date. So it's a day, month, year format. So what we'll do now is change the actual month to be May. And then we'll change the day by going left to eight. And then click on shift to change the year. And we'll change that to 2019. And then we can confirm the changes by clicking on the shift button again. So now the date and time are set. The next thing we're gonna do is we'll make sure that we got the correct unit. So at the moment it's on degrees Celsius. And if we click on the actual same button without clicking on shift, we can cycle through the various uh, units. So if we click on the actual button again, it will go from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. Once more would be uh, Kelvin. And if we click on it again, we'll go back to degrees Celsius, which is what we're going to be measuring. The next thing we want to look at is the actual type of thermocouple. And as you can see in the top, uh, we have type K selected, which is the thermocouples that we're currently using. However, uh, we're going to go through the actual various thermocouple types that are available by clicking on the shift button and then clicking on the function key, um, the left function key, where it says type. As you can see, we've got a range of thermocouples available. So it's K, J, T, E, R, S, and N. And if we click on shift, uh, we can select the thermocouple. As you can see, now we have it as type N. However, we're obviously using K types, so we'll change it back to K. And if we click on it once more, it will cycle back to K, and then click on shift. We're now back at K type thermocouple. The next feature we'll show is the actual large display, um, the channel that's in view. So at the moment we have channel one in the main display, but we can cycle through that by clicking on the channel button. So if we want to see channel two, we can click on it and we'll see channel two measuring there. And if we click on it again, we'll see channel three. Nothing's connected to channel three, so it's open circuit. Nothing's connected to channel four, so also open circuit. And if we click on it again, we'll see channel one back again. What we can also do is we can do temperature differentials. Um, so at the moment we have channel one and channel two are giving us readings. So if we click on the shift button, and as you can see over here, it says T1 minus T2. And as you can see on the bottom right hand corner, there's a 19 degree difference. The next feature I wanna show is the resolution. So at the moment we have it set at one degree resolution. Um, we can change this to be uh, 0.1 degree resolution as well. So when it's at one degree resolution, we've got a much higher temperature range from minus 100 to 1700, depending on the thermocouple type that you're using. However, we're actually only looking at small measurements at the moment, so we can actually change it to be 0.1 degree resolution. So if we click on the actual uh, 
one degree button there, it'll change it to be 0.1 degree resolution. And in this mode, we've got um, a shorter uh, temperature range of minus 100 to 200 degrees Celsius. Again, this will depend on the thermocouple type that you're using. Another very useful feature is the illumination button. This will light up the display for up to 60 seconds. And you can obviously click on it again to disable it. The next feature we'll look at is alarming. We can set high and low limits. So if we click on the shift button and then click on the button where it says high and low above it. So we'll change that to be 30 degrees Celsius. Click on the shift button and we'll leave the lower limit the same. Click on the shift button. And to actually activate it, we click on the shift button and then we need to click on the button where it says limit above it. And now it's actually being activated. So we'll change uh, channel two um, because channel one's uh, measuring outside. So we'll cycle to channel two. And then if I put my hand on the actual thermocouple, you'll see that it actually goes up and we've got an alarming sound. And if I take my hand off it, it will uh, stop alarming very shortly. And we can disable the alarms by clicking on the shift button and then clicking on limit again. And if we put our hand on the sensor again, you'll notice that it doesn't alarm. The final feature I wanna show is the recording interval. There are two kinds of recording intervals. There's the PC recording interval, which is when you connect the logger to the PC, you get live readings and recording interval, which is in data logging mode. So we're gonna be more concerned about the data logging mode. So if we click on the shift button and then click on record, at the moment it's set to once every second, but we can set it up to, um, in one second intervals, up to 59 minutes and 59 seconds, so nearly an hour. Um, so if we wanted to change it to 10 seconds, um, we'll go up like that and then go like this and then now it's in 10 seconds. And then we click on the shift button and now we've actually set it to be once every 10 seconds. So to actually activate it into recording mode, we just click on the record button and now it's actually recording. So we can now leave the date logger recording and once we've finished recording, we can connect it to the PC to download the data using the supplied USB cable. So once we've actually collected the data that we need, we can actually now connect it to the PC. And before we connect it to the PC uh, to download the data, we can hit on the record button to stop it recording. And uh, now we can plug it into the PC to download the data. So to plug in the unit, we actually need to uh, remove it from its actual uh, rubber casing so we can access the USB port. So we will first disconnect the thermocouples. And as you can see, we can now have access to the connection port. So we can now plug the date logger into the PC using the supplied adapter. And we can load the software. So let's expand this window. The first thing we need to do is ensure that the actual uh, data logger is set to be in auto mode for the connection. So we go to options and as you can see it says auto scan com port uh, and make sure that's highlighted and then click on OK. The next thing we need to do now to download the data we need to go to data logger and then click on on. And what that will do is it will communicate with the data logger to download the data and this will take a while. So it's now downloading the data. So now the data has been downloaded, we can click on the OK button. So what we'll do now is we'll remove the channels that we're not interested in. So on the left hand side, we'll get rid of 
all these over there and just leave T1 and T2 selected and then click on the review button. So you can see the graph view over there and it shows us the two traces. Um, we can adjust the colors uh, by going into options, uh, graph, and we can change the background color say to, uh, for example, white. And uh, we can also change various things like uh, the actual traces, um, but we'll leave those as they are. And we can also give the graph a title so we can go inside and outside temp and then click on OK. You notice that there are 151 pages and the time interval is set to 1. This is actually splitting the graph into 151 pages. Uh, we can actually change that by uh, adjusting the time interval to show uh, more data on one page. So if we, for example, chose uh, 30, for example, that will give us six pages and we can cycle through these pages. As you can see, we can see the data over there. But let's actually increase that to say 50. And we'll go back. Now one other thing we could do is we can adjust the Y axis. We can do this by going on the left hand side over here and uh, unticking the auto buttons. Now this one will give us the actual number of steps we want to see so what we'll do is we'll change that to be uh, 1 and then this one gives us the start point that we want to see our measurements so we can change that to be say 5 and once we do that we can click on review and you can see there we can actually see um, a more detailed view of your graph and if we go to page 2 you can see a clearer representation of this. Now obviously we've gone to page 3, we can actually increase the actual um, interval to say um, 2 and then click on review and you can see the full graph over there. We can also look at the uh, table view and we can scroll through this by looking at the bottom over there and you can see the readings, it gives us a date and timestamp. And we can also look on the bottom left hand side over here and we can actually see some statistics for our channels. Uh, we've got max and min. So if we click to, on T1 and click on max, you can see there that uh, it reached 36 degrees Celsius and it happened at 652. And we can also do uh, min and you can see it, it reached uh, a minimum of 7.2 degrees Celsius. And it reached it a number of times. We can also save the graph and spreadsheet view by clicking on File, Save, and click on Save Data. And we can just uh, give it a name, um, let's call it Test Data. And we'll change that to an Excel spreadsheet, and then click on Save. So we'll give it some time to save this data. So once the file has been saved, we can click on the OK button over there. And the next thing we'll do is go File, Save, Graph. And we'll also give that a name, uh, Test Graph. And then click on OK. We can now exit the software. And we'll ask us, do you want to save the data? Click on Yes. And we can change it to be uh, Excel. It's another way of actually saving the data. We change it to be a spreadsheet. And once the file saved, click on OK. So we can now look at the actual data that we saved. So we had test data. If we open that up, so just click on yes when this option comes up. So you can now see the data there in the spreadsheet view. And if we close that and we click on the graph, we can actually see the graph that we saved over there. So this concludes this video on the YTC data logger. Thank you for watching and please check our website for more information.